government, so that it's back to the 18 core areas that are listed in the Constitution. Our job description is there. But yet, for years, people in Washington, D.C. have decided that they want to enlarge in their job description, which of course causes the federal government to be bloated and reach in the areas where they don't belong. So that's one of the things that I, that I bring. I'm very solid in, in what I believe in and in my core values. I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to give any special interest. Okay, now let's talk about those specific things. What is it that, that, that are your core values and people? Well, uh, I mean, you mentioned the finances. Finances, yes. So the core values of who I am, I'm a wife and a mother, I'm a grandmother, but I also am very socially conservative. I believe that life begins at conception, and, I, and I'm 100% pro-life, and I think we need to be looking, instead of talking to women about abortion, let's talk about adoption instead, if you're in that situation where you cannot care for a child because it's just whatever's going on in your life. There's other alternatives. And the number one uh, unalienable right listed in our Declaration of Independence is life, so let's discuss life. Uh, so that's a very solid core value that I have. Uh, so on the, uh, the Constitution side on bills, and I know I just skipped on you, sorry about that, but when it comes to bills, number one, my staff and I will read the bills first. Well, that would, be some, that would be something new, because we're finding that some people aren't doing that. They aren't even looking at them. They're walking in on their way into the chambers and asking their staff, how am I voting? So, so, so they're asking, well, how am I going to vote on this? I don't even know what the bill is, what is in the bill. The bills, before I even consider voting yes, must be congruent with the Constitution, and specifically what the intent, founders intended. Number two, they need to be single purpose bills or free of pork barrel spending and unrelated projects. And then they need to be fiscally and socially conservative. We've got to hone this back down again to the world government. All right, and this is something that apparently doesn't hold those values in your staff. Merkley definitely does not hold those values at all. Uh, he voted to with on the, the UN Small Arms Treaty last March, which essentially was a violation of our Second Amendment rights. So here we have an elected official who took the oath of office to uphold the Constitution, and then he votes to take away those same rights and liberties that he voted to uphold. In the meantime, we have people that are in, in the military, past and present, that took that same oath of office, and they're willing to lay down their lives to defend those rights and liberties that we have. And that's wrong to have an elected official vote those away. The voters who are uh, the main elected. They need to know that I believe in being politically honest and not being politically correct. Polit political correctness has ruined this country. I will speak the hard truth, and I know some people don't want to hear it, but we've got to turn this country around. We've got to get this debt under control, $17.5 trillion, or toss around a trillion dollars like it's nothing. But it is nothing. It's a lot. So we've got to have somebody in there who has got that financial planning background, understands pluses and minuses, and understands that when times get tough, we've got to make the tough cuts. And that's where we are. We've got to reduce regulation. That's the number one. Let's take my favorite topic, the federal force. The Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, it says that the federal government can own land for Washington, D.C., 10 square miles, and for military uses. So why is it that the federal government owns 53% of the land in Oregon? And when they do that, they shut down the, land, the, the forest, essentially, and they're giving in to special interest rights. They're letting, letting people bring lawsuits against uh, on, on the timber sales and keeping those timber sales from happening. If we get those timber sales loosened up, first get the land back to the state, and then let the people in the state decide how much they think should be in public ownership, how much should go back to private ownership or into private ownership. Let's start logging. Let's start mining. Let's get the fisheries opened up. People in those professions know how to properly manage so that it is sustainable. That's going to create jobs. That's going to keep people from having to have government assistance. Right. Uh, moving the lands back to the states from the federal government, by what authority or authorities um, can you cite that would allow that to happen legally? 
Well, it's just right there in the Constitution. So I don't know that we need anything more legal than that. The Constitution is very clear what land the government can own. Okay. Uh, what about the Tenth Amendment and Common Core education issues? Uh, how do you feel about the uh, Common Core? Common Core. Well, first, there's nothing in the Constitution that says that the role of the federal government is to be in education outside of providing money for the arts. So it's pretty clear. That is another states' rights and local issue. Common Core, the idea is that a third grader in the third week in March that lives in Medford, Oregon, can move to Little Rock, Arkansas, walk into his classroom the next day, and pick up without missing a beat. That sounds great on the surface. In reality, it doesn't work because we're not robots. The other problem with Common Core is they're teaching in math this interesting concept called estimization. Uh, I was listening to a, a teaching series on Common Core, and there was a, a young man, I believe he was in the third or fourth grade, who turned in his math homework. Six times seven is 42, and it was at marked wrong. Really? Well, what the teacher wanted was a bunch of circles drawn. Draw 41, draw 40, draw 43. Estimization. Well, let's get out to the real world. Estimization. How is that going to work if this child wants to become a civil engineer? How would you like to have that bridge estimated? Or a contractor, cornerstone off a quarter inch, the entire house will no longer cannot be squared. We've got to have math. So Common Core is just more dummy down of America, and it is just more infiltration in the minds of our, of our youth. And it's not good. Thank you very much.